Oh, you couldn't do that in an I-20N. Oh, ho, ho. Car Obsession is proudly supported by Carly and Draggy. Check out the video description to find out the latest discount codes. Quite some time ago, I drove the Mark 8 Ford Fiesta ST and I saw it was good. A lot has changed in the world since then though, and although the ST's competition has dwindled, there's one part of the world that didn't get the memo, South Korea. The i20N is the stiffest competition the little fast Ford has seen for quite some time, so can the facelifted version keep itself in the game? To help keep the i20N at bay, the new Fiesta ST is packing more torque. The old car offered 290 newton meters, whereas this car now offers 320. In case you're wondering what that has done to the 0 to 62 time, well, nothing. That is because the extra torque is all about the mid range as opposed to off the line grunt. That means this car has the same 0 to 62 sprint of 6.5 seconds as the old car, and that's actually 0.3 seconds slower compared to the South Korean alternative. Now, in case you're really wondering about the top speed, which let's face it, in the UK is kind of irrelevant, that's 143. One key change for the new Fiesta ST are the new sports seats, which are no longer made by Recaro, no, they're made in-house by Ford Performance themselves. One thing I will say, and I said the same thing in my um, Ford Focus ST video, is that I do think the integrated headrests are rather ungainly, but that's merely my personal opinion. One thing I will say, and credit where credit's due, is that to sit in, these seats are absolutely fantastic. I would also say that they are perhaps a bit more accommodating for a broader frame compared to the Recaro. So if you are a broader person and you found that the bolsters in the Recaro's pinched your sides a bit too much, give these a go, because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. The only other thing I will say compared to the Recaro's though, and it could be poor muscle memory from yours truly, but I would say these seem to sit a bit higher compared to the Recaro's in the old car, but I could be wrong. Does it detract from the overall driving experience? No, it doesn't. Actually, speaking of the driving experience, I think it's about time we see what it's like to drive. Oh, God, I've been crouched down for far too long. I'm getting old. Oh, but not too old to enjoy cars like this. I do love a fast Ford. Now, from the get-go, I think you'd have to drive this car and the pre-facelift back-to-back to really notice that increase in torque. But like the old car, the three-pot has got a nice energy to it. It's fizzy, it's zesty, and I'd say it's got more energy compared to the four-pot used in the i20N. It's got more character about it, and that can only be a good thing. Just like the old car, that power is fed to the front wheels via a six-speed manual gearbox, which is slick, snappy, and mechanical. Okay, perhaps the i20N, the gear change is a little bit tighter in my opinion, but I don't want to take anything away from the ST. The gear change is brilliant. And that, that for me, is a really important part of a hot hatch, particularly a small hot hatch like this, a good gear change. And the ST definitely delivers on that point. The ride, as you would predict, is firm, more so at slower speeds and around town. But to be fair, when you get up to speed on roads like this or dual carriageways, the ride, I think you'll find, is surprisingly compliant. It's no Rolls Royce, of course, but it's a small hot hatch. It's never going to be a magic carpet ride, is it? These sports seats, they do need a special mention because they are brilliant to sit in, comfortable, supportive, and they hold you in the right places. Through the corners, just like the old car, the Fiesta ST is absolutely magic. 
the steering has got a good feedback to it it's well weighted it feels meaty in the hand i love the uh, the feel of the steering wheel itself it's got a nice kind of girthiness to it and i like that the brakes perform well the pedal layout is pretty much bang on well set up for heel and toe changes which again in a car like this i would say is pretty much vital the brakes themselves have got a good feedback they're strong so the fiesta st ticks many boxes now through the corners i would argue that the i20n is perhaps a bit more focused and i would argue that's the better car to have on a race circuit but where the st has an advantage is again in the character and the way how it feels i would say the chassis in the fiesta st is more playful and it's got a bit more adjustability to it you get a sense that the i20n is very focused it wants to find the apex hit it and then get out the corner as fast as possible but the st it wants to have a bit of fun in the process it's boisterous it's a little bit of a class clown and i like that now that isn't to say that this car is no good in the corners and it just wants to give you lift off oversteer all the time no this can be precise in the corners when you want it to be but when you want this little pocket rocket to let its hair down then it will also do that and the i20n doesn't really do that in the same way i would say this has got more of an adjustable personality now warning i'm about to get a bit nerdy on you so peak torque in this, as I've mentioned, is at 320 newton meters. In the Fiesta ST, that is available from 1,600 RPM through to 4,000 RPM, and peak power, which is 200 horsepower, that that is, that comes in at 6,000 RPM. Conversely, for the i20m, that's got 275 newton meters of torque, and although it comes in later in the rev range, that's 1750 it goes on later in the rev range 4500 peak power and that is 204 horsepower so four more and that's available between 5500 and 6000 rpm okay i've had my nerd moment we can move on now As you would expect from any modern day hot hatch, of course I've got a choice of driving modes. Now the new ST is only available in just one trim level, ST3, so you get pretty much everything as standard, although this car does have a few options. As part of that, you get the performance pack, so I've got a limited slip differential, and I've got the racetrack drive mode. On top of that, I've got Eco, Normal and Sport. One thing I really like about the updated Fiesta ST is that on the steering wheel you have a mode button to switch between the drive modes but more importantly you've got a button marked s that is a shortcut and it will get you straight into sports mode no faffing about no mucking about with the touch screens no hit the s and you're into sport i like it now let's bring things down to earth a bit more and speak about the more mundane things but things that are pretty important fuel economy let's face it petrol prices at the moment are enough to make a grown man cry. I've got nothing left! I've got nothing left! <laughs> Although they are starting to come down slowly but surely. On a combined run, Ford states that you can expect around 35 mpg, no sorry, no sorry, I'm, I'm telling a lie, 42.2 mpg on a combined run. What I've been guessing is 35 mpg, that's why I got a little bit confused. Um, and that was in sports mode with a relatively considerate right foot so if you have it in eco mode and you have the feet of a ballerina i'm sure you can get high 30s or even maybe low 40s but yeah in my experience i've been getting around 35 mpg co2 emissions they are 151 grams per kilometer so for the first year of ved you will be required to pay whatever number i've put down there as a caption now, in regard to price, this is an area where 
the Fiesta ST does lose a few brownie points because in standard form, this has got a few options, including the uh, panoramic roof, which you can't actually spec for UK cars, interestingly. In standard form, this will set you back £26,645. That is quite a lot of money for such a small car. And for what it's worth, for the i20N, give or take, that's about a thousand pounds cheaper, maybe a little bit over a thousand pounds. And bearing in mind that comes with a lot of standard as well, and you get a five year warranty, which also covers you for track usage, it does mean that the Fiesta ST isn't quite as good value for money as it used to be. Don't get me wrong, you do get a lot of standard, but there is also some things that are optional. For example, heated front seats, which this car hasn't got. Thankfully, today is quite mild in the UK, so I don't need them, but it would be nice to have the option of heated seats. Again, to touch upon more boring things, but refinement. This is more refined compared to the Mark 7. That was um, more of a, a raw, pure car. There is a bit of road noise coming from the 18 inch alloys. So on the motorway, you may need to uh, turn the stereo up a bit more, but all things considered, Oh, a little pop from the exhaust there. Ooh, hoo, hoo. All things considered, for the type of car this is, I would say it's it's pretty refined. God, this thing's fun. It's cars like this that really make me enjoy driving. I love a hot hatch and arguably I probably prefer smaller hot hatches because they're better suited for UK roads. Look at this road in particular, it's quite narrow, it's quite bumpy. A Focus ST is brilliant but on a road like this I would argue that Fiesta is better because it's more manoeuvrable, it's smaller so you don't have to worry when a larger vehicle comes the other way and you can use more of the power more of the time. 200 horsepower may not sound like a great deal in today's world of RS3s or you know, super high performance cars, but in the real world, 200 horsepower, probably about just right in my opinion. When it comes to space and practicality, that is the same as the pre-face lift, meaning you get a boot that offers 292 litres with rear seats up and almost 1,100 with them folded down. Predictably, rear space will be tight for taller occupants, so you may want to consider the Polo GTI or the i20N if you want a bit more space. In regard to pricing and specification, the Fiesta ST is only available in one trim level, ST3. Why Ford just don't call it the ST and be done with it is beyond me. Prices start from £27,320 with standard features including ST styling, 18 inch alloys, LED lights with matrix LED headlights, tinted rear windows, ST suspension, climate control, Ford performance sport seats, keyless entry, rear parking sensors, reversing camera, performance pack, 8 inch touchscreen, wireless phone charging pad, as well as safety features such as autonomous emergency braking, traffic sign recognition and lane keep assist. As fun as this car is, and I do love it, it's a fantastic little thing. It's a little, little scallywag, a little rascal. But when you've got the i20M, which is cheaper and in some respects a better car, it makes it difficult to, to really fly the flag for the Blue Oval. And I have this exact same problem with the Focus ST. It's difficult to recommend both cars when the South Korean alternatives are simply better value. <laughs> Whoa, you couldn't do that in an i20N. Oh. The Fiesta ST is just a, a little mean green bundle of fun. It's such a fantastic way in which to induce a big fat smile on your face. I love it.
I absolutely adore this car. But I'm here to be objective. I need to be impartial. And as as much as I do love this car, and it is so much fun, bearing in mind that, give or take, this is about a grand more than an i20N, maybe a bit, bit more in fact. And the i20N, in my opinion, offers better value. You get a five-year warranty, which covers you for track usage. And in some areas, it is the better car. It makes it, re- it, it, makes it quite difficult to recommend this car instead of the option from South Korea. One thing I will say, in my opinion at least, if you want fun, go for this car. If you want something that's a bit more focused, something that's going to be a bit more capable on a race circuit, go for the i20M. I think that's really the best way I can put it. And I would have loved to have been able to test both cars head to head in the same video, but it just didn't fall into place. the The planets didn't quite uh, the the planets didn't quite align for that to happen. But it is what it is, and I'm thankful. I'm grateful that I've been able to experience both cars, albeit at different times, um, different periods in time. Sadly, the fun is over, and that means the video is almost over as well. Before I go, though, I do need to bring you some kind of conclusion. That is going to be a bit tricky because, as you've seen, I do rather like the new Fiesta ST, but I do need to be impartial and objective. Now, speaking from an objective point of view, it is a tad tricky to recommend the Fiesta when you bear in mind that the i20N is cheaper, represents better value for money, I would say it's more track focused, has a longer warranty, which also covers you for track usage as well. There is one area, though, where I think the Fiesta ST wins out, and that is fun factor. Small cars like this, small hot hatches, need to be fun. They need to be the kind of car that will paint a permanent grin upon your face and the kind of car that will be mischievous and uh, make, you, make you laugh out loud like a naughty school kid. And the ST does that in spades. The i20N is a cracking car, don't get me wrong, but for pure fun, I think the Fiesta ST wins out. So to conclude, I would say if you want a more focused, track-ready small hot hatch, go for, for the i20N. If you want your hot hatch to be fun and to have more of a character, get the one with the blue oval on the front. A big thank you to Ford UK for loaning me this car for the week, and of course a big thank you to you guys watching this video. I do hope you have enjoyed it or found it useful. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.